Hmm. Hi, friends. Um, I wanted to take you along with me on a little adventure that I'm going on. So yesterday, I got um, approved for Amazon FBA, so fulfilled by Amazon. So basically, I can start selling stuff on Amazon through Amazon Prime. And how that works is, is you set up a listing, um, you make sure all your information is good. Um, a lot of people, what a lot of people do is, <clears throat> excuse me, is they get stuff from Ali uh, Baba um, shipped to them, or not shipped to them, but shipped. Um, they they have their stuff customized and branded uh, to their branding, and then they send it. Have uh, the suppliers in China send that stuff to uh, Amazon, but. I've been working on a, let me show you here, um, if you follow me at all on um, social media, is I make these sweet little business card holders. Now they take a steel ball, let me show you the ball, um, I'm having a little bit of a problem with my suppliers, this didn't turn out so great, but they have a little steel ball and the magnets in there and it holds your cards and you can you know, you can see that the ball holds up. You can actually probably get about 10 business cards in there and still do this. Um, but it holds them really nicely, and it's poured out of concrete. I got my logo back there. Um, so I made a listing yesterday for that on Amazon. And it was kind of a jolt to see um, my product... Um, on an Amazon page. Yeah, if you look at my Instagram, it says uh, currently unavailable. That's mainly because um, uh, I haven't sent them anything yet. So now what I have to do is come out here and make a fuck ton of business card holders because that thing is actually getting popular. Right now I have three orders on Etsy uh, that need to be fulfilled. Um, after posting that, that picture to Instagram last night, I got another request to get in touch with somebody else um, here in San Francisco that can hold them in their store. So I'm going to have to actually get like my production up a little bit uh, and start uh, making a whole bunch of these. Unfortunately, right now, as you can see, let's see if I can show you this. I only have two molds. Um, so right now, I can make about two a day. Um, I'm probably going to pour another mold for this um, in the next few days. But I do want to figure out, what I want to do is I want to figure out what my time uh, turns out to be to make 20, 30, 40 business card holders. Um, figure out the costs that are involved with making the business card holder. So the, um, the steel balls, the magnets, the, the volume of, of concrete that I need. Um, start breaking that information down so I can see what my profit margin is. Um, and then also figure out um, after all the Amazon fees, uh, shipping them to them. Uh, packaging. I need packaging now, so I just bought a bunch of uh, craft uh, little gift boxes uh, that I'm going to fill with um, paper, or I'm going to I'm going to uh, package the the <laughs> the business card holders and paper in these boxes, and then I got to make packaging, um, and then I have to label them. So. This is going to be a little bit of an adventure. Uh, I actually ordered all my packaging materials from Amazon, and those should be coming today. Uh, and I'm going to use the box. Hopefully, I can use the box that those ship to me in to ship my final products back to Amazon. So I'm going to actually use that as a um, kind of like a template for... Um, for shipping, for, for how many I'm going to eventually send into Amazon. So I kind of wanted to uh, start this video and let you guys know what I'm up to. Um, I'm trying a, a little bit different of a format here. I keep getting my 
need to figure out how to make sure that my exposure is consistent. I keep losing a focus lock on my face. Uh, there we go. It's right on my nose. Um, and it's a little cold out here, or it's been super fucking cold out here for the past few days. It's actually a little bit nicer compared to the past few days. So I'm going to do a pour today, start getting those orders from uh, Etsy done, um, and then uh, start... I'm, I'm going to probably try to pour every day for the next two, three, four weeks um, and get as many business card holders made as I possibly can. And in two weeks, that's 28 business card holders. Um, in a month, if I can pour every day, that's 60 business card holders. Um, if I add a mold to that, <coughs> that makes times three. So instead of times two, times three. So 30 times three is 90 for a month. I can make oh, oh, almost 100 a month. Um, just with three molds, but the, uh, the finishing time and, like, actually having to sand each one, um, to, to a nice finish, um, that shit takes forever, so I'm gonna probably have to batch that out and figure out a little bit better way to make sure that that can go as smoothly as possible, but I'm hoping, um, that, um, me... <clears throat> recently having finalized my concrete mix um, to just be cement and uh, fiberglass. Uh, so Portland cement and fiberglass is my mix. Um, I might use some plasticizer to uh, increase the flow so it can help uh, the molding process a little bit more. Um, and uh, hopefully that will reduce, that'll make them a little bit easier to manipulate afterwards. So instead of having like a sand or some sort of aggregate in the mix, which usually really slows down my sanding process, um, I prefer the look of the, the just the straight uh, Portland cement with the fiberglass um, anyways. So hopefully uh, that being uh, less of an issue with sanding, that can reduce my time um, in producing these. So I'm going to get started on this. I don't know if I'm going to add anything else to this video, uh, but I guess here's a montage of me working. <laughs> blows up uh, a lot bigger than I expected to, and I don't want to run into uh, an issue where I don't have enough stock uh, to keep up, or my production is just not fast enough to keep up with um, the demand for my product. Uh, so um, one of the main things, you can probably hear it, is the vibrator on, on this uh, thing. I'll turn it off for now. So it's not humming in the background. 
Uh, but um, the vibration table that I made for this, which is basically just um, uh, uh, two pieces of MDF um, on springs uh, floating, and then what I did was I was doing some research on like vibration motors and what and whatnot. So um, I ended up just buying a cheap fan. Um, and cutting off two of the three propellers so it's offset and it'll vibrate. Um, I might have to make like a new container, or, like holder for it, but the ba main thing for the vibration table is allowing it, as you probably saw, um, the bubbles to, to float up um, and then also helps me. One of the main problems that I end up with is here are some two. This one has... This one I started to sand, but you can see the flashing that you get around the edge um, from these is um, kind of a problem, not a huge deal, but um, I want to reduce uh, the need for um, these little flakes coming off, and that's a lot easier when you have um, the vibration um, kind of evening out that back part. So one of my main things is that these back parts end up being a little um, not quite flat. So it, it takes a little while of sanding to, to get that even. Um, the second thing is, is that I got this um, belt sander. And the belt sander does a little bit of weird stuff when you start sanding, um, when you start dry sanding. Um, it ends up uh, building up some, some stuff and... Uh, you you end up with weird textures. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to describe it. Maybe in a future video, uh, if I end up with that problem again, I'll show it to you. But wet sanding is probably the way to go. And I usually have a thing where I'm I'm out here, <clears throat> I'm dry sanding, and then I go into the bathroom to finish up wet sanding by hand or with my Dremel. Um, but I want to keep, I want to wet sand out here. I've done a few tests with this, doing wet sanding on, on the belt sander, and it seems to be, seems to be fine. I want to make sure that, um, I'm not, uh, getting water into the housing, of course, but it seems to, the water that I put on the belt, uh, seems to flow away from the belt, but I want to make, make something, um, so that I don't have to just keep so I usually just use this bottle of water, and I would rather have some sort of pump system on here so that I can uh, do my work and then have the water continuously flowing, um, and ultimately I'd like a collection system for the water that flows off so then I can reflow that back, maybe filter it, and uh, reflow that back into um, what I'm using on the sander. Uh, so that I'm not just going through, like, water all the time. Um, so those are a couple things. I will, um, I'm going to still th keep thinking about how I can improve. Ultimately, what I want to do is be able to have, I don't, I don't want to have to pour every day, too. Um, I, I'd really like to get to a point, um, and we'll see, uh, with this first shipment to Amazon what, what the numbers will turn out to be, but I would like to have a, a set pour day where I pour, and then maybe another day where I'm doing finishing, and then I can pour all my molds, um, and and then the next day uh, do finishing on them. Um, and then if if I can do that, so like maybe once a week, twice a week, I have a pour day. Um, maybe I have right now. I only have like I said two molds. Um, Maybe if I have uh, like five, six, seven molds, um, maybe ten molds uh, of these business card holders, um, I can get a lot more done in a day, um, and then I can batch them out really easily so that like I have a day when I do concrete and that I'm making product. Um, from molds that I've already designed and made, um, and then I can get those um, packaged up and, and labeled and sent off to Amazon. Um, I just kind of want to really think about 
a lot of this stuff ahead of time before before it becomes too much of a problem. Right now I'm going to keep with it just the two molds, see how many I can fit into the Amazon box that's going to come later today. Um, maybe if it's too small of a box, maybe if we're only going to get like 10 or 15 in there, I, I'll find another Amazon box to, to shove that into. Um, I just don't want to get too involved with like, I did go down the rabbit hole of like, hey, my boxes are four by four. Amazon's shipment uh, requirements say like 25, uh, 25 inches on the package, like per side. So that gets me, I think around 200 uh, in a box, but these are each uh, packaged uh, just under a pound. So uh, their maximum weight limit on a single package is 50 pounds. So I ended up with, you know, figuring out, okay, I can do five by five by two, and then I can get 50 in there. But, uh, five by five by two, those boxes, 20 by 20 by eight is, are more expensive than say a, uh, 12, what is, what was it? 12 by 12 by 20, uh, which gets me 45. I, I don't, I don't want to start going down that rabbit hole yet because I'm not there yet. Uh, I'd rather, uh, recycle the boxes that I do have, uh, that are coming to me anyways from buying stuff on, on Amazon, um, and send those back, uh, full of product. So, um, that's my little adventure that I've been going on for the past couple weeks. Let me take this off. Um, and, uh, well, not past few weeks, past couple days, actually. Um, I have been doing research over the past couple weeks, uh, but this has really kind of blown up in the past couple days because I've also realized that, like, hey, I can probably, if I want Voidbox to start gaining some capital so we can do more of these projects, I, I'd like to start uh, thinking about uh, selling things like uh, resistor capacitor kits, uh, various other uh, parts uh, that we use in our projects uh, that can be available for any fucking helicopter. Have, have the have the parts in our library um, on Amazon so that people can get some of these uh, parts uh, a little bit faster and a little bit cheaper than it is to order on something like AliExpress, uh, where you get really good deals on product, but it's gonna take it takes like three, four, five weeks to get to you. Um, even if you're using ePacket, and sometimes they don't just don't show up at all. So. I'd, I'd like to see if this can go well for me. This is a new business, kind of a business venture for me, and um, I'm going to take you guys along for the ride and see how this works out. Um, I'm going to start with these, see how these sell. I'm doing some research on some other stuff, like I said, capacitor and resistor kits, see if we can make something a little unique for um, the DIYers out there that you guys... Um, if you're watching this, or probably interested in, uh, what kind of parts would you see like to see that you, you know, you 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 find you maybe find on AliExpress, but you can't even find on Amazon and spend a couple more dollars uh, to have it to your door within two days. Um, what do you want to see? Um, I guess that's it for today. Um, I'm gonna stop raffling now and uh, let you go. And, um, I guess follow me on Instagram. I'm mostly on Instagram, uh, at Clomads. I'm also on Twitter, at Clomads. Um, my website is Clomads.com, but that's really for my design work and potentially doing, um, more design work for other people. Um, really just like a portfolio, I guess. And also Queer.com is my nonprofit for queer and trans artists, and also 
uh, Voidbox, which is where we're starting with. So vdbx.io, that website is actually not up, but we are on, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. vdbx.io uh, is Voidbox's uh, social handle across the top three. And uh, I guess like this if you liked it. Throw it. Throw a dislike if you disliked it. Uh, let me let me know what you uh, let me know what you're thinking. Subscribe if you want to. Um, my autistic ass is gonna go do something else right now and uh, let these concrete things, you know, do their thing. Bye, peace. I guess bye, friends. Yeah.